Hello everyone, this is a one controller port quick play of Wii Ski for the Nintendo Wii. This game is a uh, surprised me in, in how good it is. Uh, uh, I bought it for like a couple dollars and I was like, okay, I like I like like dollar Wii game shopping and so usually usually it's not just a dollar though, it's like a, like one to five dollars basically. And, um, and so I picked this up because Bandai Namco published it, and, you know, Bandai Namco is a known game publisher. There's a lot of shovelware on the Wii, and, you know, some of it's real rotten. Um, I would say Whiskey is not, not really that. Uh, so basically, this is a, I guess you'd call it, like, a ski vacation game. Um, so you can, like, you can't really make your character, per se, here. Uh, there's, like, a series of pre-made faces, so there's, like, 32... Um, they have different hairstyles, different, uh, different, you know, faces, skin color, things like that. And you can basically choose, um, one for, for a series of categories of, of characters. So you have boy, you have girl, um, and then you also have, uh, teen boy, teen girl. And so they look a little older, um, and it goes all the way, all the way up to, um, uh, Grandpa and Grandma, which unfortunately Grandpa and Grandma only have 16 different heads. They they skimped out a little bit there, but it's nice that they have like such a wide variety of characters. Even though like honestly, in a lot of cases, there's not a ton of difference between like this version of the the girl and the mother equivalent. If I can find her real quick, like like yeah, there's like some slight changes or whatever, but for the most part, they're they're kind of similar. Um, so you just kind of kind of choose the the character you like most and even if you even if you like have a a boy character or something like that or a girl character that's you know supposed to be a young kid kind of thing um, that you might be more into uh, you can still uh, adjust their body size and stuff to make them feel more um I how to capitalize ah, we'll just put caps lock on uh, you can kind of adjust them to um, to fit the body type you need. Uh, so you, you have like a, a young face still. So like we can sit here, we can change the, the width. So if I wanted my teen boy to actually be like a little kid, I could just, you know, shrink him down to be such. Uh, but if I wanted my little, little kid to be an adult, I could just be like all the way big, big all the way. Um, so yeah, so we'll go ahead and make our little character here. So technically kind of create a character, but but not not really, really. Um, so go ahead and jump in here. Uh, when you're doing this, um, basically when you start this game, and you, you'll kind of see right here, there's there's a handful of like tutorial pop-ups and stuff, um, but they kind of just let you do your own thing. Um, so, you know, you have a little welcome screen here, it gives you a quick go over the controls real quick. I'll definitely talk about that. But um, basically, uh, you know, we're, we're right at the top of the bunny hill here, and then if you see in the top of the corner, there's like a big map. Um, that we're on and uh, as we as we move around here a little bit um, They'll pop up some more tutorial stuff, but um basically how the controls work in this game are um, you you basically flick the Wii remote and nunchuck forward to kind of uh, Put your little sticks down. I don't know any skiing terminology So and you do left right left right to turn I uh, get to turn both the nunchuck and the Wii remote in this case uh, Holding the C button does like this little stance here. It, I think it slows you down a little bit while you while you're skiing and then, uh, like, tilting the Wii Remote and Nunchuck so they're facing away from each other. So, like, like they're, they're, like, normally you'd hold the Wii Remote with its face pointing up towards your ceiling. You basically hold it so it points to the right of you. And that, uh, puts you in a little, like, crouching position so you can gain speed. Things like that. Um, there's some other controls here, like holding down the Z and the B button allow you to do this little, like, swivel kind of thing which is important for the little like i think they're called moguls or something like that where you basically um wobble between like packs of snow uh but for the most part you know it's it's pretty much just gonna be you know when you want to gain speed you flick forward when you're ready to just keep going you just like you know turn your wii remote and nunchuck outward from each other and you do your little crouch and then you know for for other things like turning and stuff um, and the, the wiggle, you know, it's just basically, uh, left, right, left, right. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, and then once you're at the, the bottom of the hill here, you know, you, you, there's not really any place to go. So you, so you hop onto your little, uh, ski lift here <laughs> and you ride the ski lift. 
Uh, but, you know, it's, it's kind of nice, like, it's nice that they let you sit here and look. It takes a while, <laughs> so unless you're, like, a kid with a ton of free time or something, you're probably just going to want to press the A button to skip it. But it does give you the opportunity to kind of, like, you know, look to see those little, you'll see those little, like, yellow blocks there. Those are, like, little quests, and we'll do some of those at the top of the hill here. But you can kind of, like, eye out the environment, especially early on. You can kind of, like, just take a look and see if there's anything that, like, catches your interest, because... On the map itself, I mean, there's not, like, a ton to really, you know, make these, make these distinct. Um, go through that. It's just basically telling me how to do quests and stuff. But, yeah, um, there is some slight uh, analog stick controls here. Basically, holding back on the uh, stick will slow you down. And then also, when you're, when you're still, you can kind of do left and right to turn your camera, but you can't do that at any other point. And then I think if you double tap back, yeah, you turn around. So if you need to turn around, if you need to climb up a mountain, it's uh, a little funky. Basically, you just like look where you want to go. We have enough of a slope here that I don't have to actually climb up. I'll I'll show you somewhere else here in a second. So let's let's get back to the bunny hill over here. Um, you can kind of like fast travel, which I'll show you later um, outside of the uh, the what's it called. Um, uh, we're going to go to the shark pass. So basically, um, there's this little... When you go down these paths, you'll see these little, like, icons appear in the bottom right corner. They'll show you, like, your current score for this this hill. Um, basically, when you go down these hills, you're kind of scored for, for a handful of different things. One is uh, uh, your balance, so, you, you know, make sure you don't fall over. Uh, other one is tricks. Oh, uh, whoops. I'm having a hard, little hard time. Oh, some of the tricks are, uh, well, most of the tricks are motion control based. Oh, boy! <laughs> some of the tricks are motion control based. Some of them are, are analog stick based. Um... The NPCs riding around is kind of random, so like in the case of that, you know, I probably was at a, a good pace to get a good score on this hill, but since I bumped into that guy, that messed up my balance. Um, and that's just kind of how this game is. Like everybody's just kind of randomly placed about, and they're all skating and doing their own thing. And uh, you can come off a jump, and then there'll just be a person like sitting right at the bottom of the hill uh in your way so if you see that there we got a d we could press a to check our score the reason being is my time was bad i was very slow um and then also you know a is a uh, a good score but it, it s plus is the best score in this game for this stuff so needed a little bit of improvement all that stuff um but you know it's 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 kind of nice that it's like you just kind of go go into the um the course and it's just kind of like you're you just kind of do it. Like, there's no, like, real prompt to start it or anything like that. Like, how do I get back up this bunny hill real quick? Let me think about this for a second. Is there, there it is. Um, so, there's no real prompt or anything. I mean, you do see that little icon in the corner that says, hey, what was your last rank? Um, but you just kind of go and you just kind of, you know, you don't have to, like, queue up for the event or anything. You're just there and you just skate down and get scores you at the end. And it's kind of nice to just kind of, like, go down a hill sometimes and just get, like, a bunch of different, you know, uh you know, ranks as you go down, especially early on when you don't have any, like, things where you're capped out and you're still kind of learning the controls. You're just, like, slightly getting better. And uh, when you get to the bottom of the hill, you can't see what it ranks you. So not all of them rank tricks because not all, all courses have, like, jumps. Um, it would have been nice if, if there's a way... Like, you can look at this course details map, I think, and, and it'll tell you... Oh, no, I doesn't mean to do that there. It, it'd be nice to, like, know exactly what it's going to score you for before you get to the bottom. Um, but for the most part... Uh, the best thing to do is just go as fast as possible. Uh, turning a lot is important, and just like don't bump into things. And if you see a jump, hit it and do some tricks. You'll generally be pretty safe. Uh, kind of the backbone of this game is the quest system. So you see all these like characters here, the little uh, icons over their head. They have little little events for you to do. So um, so since this is like a new character, these are probably gonna be fairly easy. So we'll hop into here and get a little conversation things. And and a lot of the dialogue's really cute. Um, most of the time it's very functional, just like, hey, here's how you do a solemn. Um, but sometimes it can be fun, like, uh, there's, like, a delivery quest where you have to, like, deliver coke to some girl. And, uh, and the whole reason she, she ordered the coke in the first place, because she's, like, trying to confess to her boyfriend and got too nervous and got very thirsty. Um, when doing these events, all that matters is that you complete the objective, so no need to, like, do any fancy turning. You can take as much time as you need to, as long as you're under the timer on the top left. Um, there's no real, like, like, scoring system to these. It's just, did you complete the objective, yes or no? So, you know, first solemn event, pretty easy. Just kind of go down the hill, hit the goal. Um, 
and then you, uh, you get it here. The purpose of doing all these, um, other than just, you know, having a good time, <laughs> um, is the, at the end, and you get little replays and stuff for some of the things, so you can kind of, like, watch your character. You see in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this little number value that goes up. Every event you, uh, finish gives you one number, as well as every rank you earn on a, um, on a, uh, course. So if you get, like, an A, A ranking on a course, you'll get three stars automatically, because you're, you you've essentially completed, you know, the C, B, and A ranking. So it just gives you all three at once. There is a couple, there are a couple of events where they say, hey, you need to get an S plus on this course and, um, or not S plus specifically immediately, but um, they'll be like, hey, you need to get a, uh, a ranking of a C. And then the next time you do the event, it's like ranking of B or King of A. And it does do that thing where if you get S plus on that, on that event, uh, it only counts for the B ranking you did. It doesn't like clear all of them out immediately for you. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know, for the most part, it's a pretty minor complaint since I feel like most of the time, a lot of this stuff is, like, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, functional. Um, so, so we're gonna stick on the bunny hill here for a little bit, so it's gonna be a little slow to start, but we'll switch over to some harder tracks here in a little bit. Um, but I'll just show you, like, the different types of events and stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still skiing. You're not gonna, you know, do anything too crazy for the most part. Um... But, you know, there's different types of objectives. So instead of, like, solemn on this one, um, we basically are collecting this girl uh, lost her ski poles. And uh, she yells at us to go get them. Even though she's asking for a nice person. And then she's going to tell us, I'll never lose anything again. But you do this quest for sure multiple times over and over again with different items. <laughs> um, so you come down here, you know, collect your stuff. No real need to do a trick, but we can do a trick here if I have enough speed. Yeah, there we go. Get our little trick. Uh, you can collect more than the, the needed value, but like I said, there's there's no ranking system here. So as long as you get past the, the starting line, as as well as collect the the number you need, um, you're good. Flip around, and do a little dance, and then you get your your one point. Um, all of these quests are uh, repeated on different tracks so this little girl in particular we'll see her like 10 more times uh throughout the game um and and she has different it's it's pretty much all the same dialogue with her every time but it's always slightly different um but it's all the same premise every time oh no i i lost this please somebody help me and then you try to get it for her and she yells at you to go faster <laughs> um uh, let's see what other events we got over here. We'll do the the precise stop one. Uh, actually, no. Let's do the uh, this one. So, so this event is a little different. Where um, instead of like collecting stuff, uh, this dude is a teacher. He uh, forgot his um, or not forgot. He he lost track of one of his students. He's like, hey, please find my student for me. And you get to see a little picture. We gotta find Makoto. So he's got like a yellow jacket and a shaved head. Um, and, and so you get started at the top of this bunny hill and there's a bunch of icons for a bunch of students and you kind of go down here and try to find them. Um, you get, if you choose the wrong person, you get a penalty. So it's just like, you know, come down here pretty slow. It gives you like a different reason to, uh, or like a different way to ski about since you're, you're kind of trying to focus on identifying this person. The, uh, Wii's, uh, resolution does not do this event any favors really <laughs> but you know it's not bad it, it, it's plenty fine you just got to get a little close to, to see people so generally look at people with the yellow jacket but he's got brown hair um it is a little hard to uh get back up if you miss the person um which i'm not seeing him that is not him either oh no we might have to uh, uh restart i don't think that was him um uh see any yellow jackets over here I don't see any over here Is... I think that's him all the way at the bottom dude <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> oh interesting I can get on the uh, thing I guess you could ride the thing back up if you uh, missed it <laughs> all right one nice thing is that um it's it's pretty easy to restart if you mess up um, so like if we got to the bottom of that hill and, you know, we didn't want to, you know, ride back to the top. So let's, let's come over here and do this one real quick. Uh, this is a pretty simple mission. It's basically, um, 
basically stop within a certain spot. Um, it gets harder and harder on the faster courses because then you have to like stop a lot earlier and the time limit gets kind of shorter and shorter so you have less time to really kind of figure out. Actually, I don't know if the time limit gets shorter and shorter. It's 20 seconds, so that's pretty short as it is. But, you know, it, it basically, you know, gets a little harder. This one's definitely the easiest. So basically, you know, we can stop whenever we want and we can kind of get in there. Um, but, you know, if we, if we failed it, we could do restart and you qu pretty quickly jump back to the top. It's no loading times or anything like that. You just gotta wait for the little timer to count down and then you can redo the mission, um, which is very handy um, because some of them are some of them are a little little finicky. Or not, even not finicky, but they, they can be a little a little troublesome to, um, to be successful at. Uh, the one other thing I want to show you control-wise is that sometimes, and this is probably like the most inconvenient movement of the entire game. Let me see if I can uh, get down here. Um, and then as you complete these quests, they all teleport off to different parts of the map for different courses and stuff. Um, but like, uh, basically if I wanted to like go back up this hill, you kind of have to like face your camera this way and then you waggle the remote and then he'll go up like five or so steps, three steps. So if you wanted to go up a long way to somewhere, you'd have to do this the whole way. You basically are just waggling the remote up and down along with the nunchuck over and over again to climb up. Um... So usually the best way to, to get back up a hill if, is either use the little, like, you know, stops down there where you can go up the hill. Or you also have, like, a, a map up here where you can kind of, like, you know, dump yourself up on top again. And be like, okay, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Um, so I'm going to actually switch over to my other main character here. Um, and those little stars that we get basically unlock gear, um, which I'll go ahead and show you. So here's my main character. Uh, you have different, like, gear in the gear shop, so, um, there's, like, a handful of different styles here. Um, so you can go, like, oh, I want this. Um, let me see. This is new, I think. Um, and then each of these have, like, four different colors, so you can select a different color. I actually don't like the color of that one, so. So, and there's also some, like, more, the, like, actual, you know, skiing outfits and stuff like that. But then there's more silly ones when you get into, like, the special here. Say, so like, a kimono, bear suit. Uh, wedding dress, penguin suit, maid outfit. Um, I don't know if these vary per gender. Like, if you're a dude, if you get a maid outfit and stuff, too. Um, I'm gonna guess maybe not the wedding dress, but who can say? Maybe it's, like, t a tuxedo or something like that. Um, and you have, like, uh, you know, different skis you can put on. I don't think these skis change the handling at all. I could be wrong about that, but it seems like they don't really play an impact. Um... And then also you get different stocks, which are like little stick things if you're not familiar with skiing like I am. Uh, gloves, boots, and hats so you can get you know, like, you know, little caps on. Uh, there's also special ones here, so if, you know, if you do the bear suit, you can you can complete the look. <laughs> so, so yeah. And then goggles. Um, some of these goggles are fun. I actually like the, uh, I like these ones. <laughs> so, we'll put those on. There we go. We made one change. Uh, yeah, and so, like, I have 127 out of the 160 stars. Um, uh, it, it, the game really has no objective. Oh, and when you when you go into this, you can choose the t time of day. So, actually, I kind of prefer the nighttime. And usually what I did, like, immediately from the start of this game is I just kind of dumped myself off at the top, top of the mountain just so I could get more familiar with the whole track. And you kind of see what kind of, um, you know, difficulties you'll come across as you go down the mountain. So, particularly, like, the moguls, which are, like, the little little ball things. Um, I like the nighttime a little better because there's different weather effects and stuff. I think daytime is just kind of like your standard clear thing. In this case, we have like an aurora, which is nice. Um, you can also get like snowstorms. Uh, I don't know if fireworks go off during the aurora stuff. Um, so, you, know, you can kind of come down here and, you know, the first few times you do this track, it's not going to be a... Uh, it's not going to go well. <laughs> you know, this is like maybe my 50th time going down this little track, and uh, I still am not good at it. The highest score I've gotten in is an S, so I still got to get an S plus on it. Um, you know, it, 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 these little moguls are not so bad if you're going down slowly, but when you're trying to, you know, keep a fast speed, it can be a little difficult. Um, I think there might be like a very specific like, like point in the moguls that you kind of want to get into and like different timings on how you go down the mountain. I went pretty bad that time. Um, you know, being a motion control game, like right there, I tried to do some tricks and they uh, they failed on me as far as I could tell. 
Uh, there's definitely some inconsistency with the motion controls and things like that at times. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of just nice to, like, you know, start from the top and just kind of go down. There's different events and stuff as you go down. And, and usually, I, I don't know if, like, when you complete an event, if everything just moves to the next, like, level up of of course. I, I feel like they spread out after the first Bunny Hill stuff. So it's not like everything is just, you know, immediately at another location. Um, so it kind of encourages you to explore a bit. I messed that up. I'm going to try to mogul down. But each, uh, each course kind of has its own feel. Like, you know, that, that other one had moguls, but it was like a very, you know, ah, I'm doing bad. It's a very, like, you know, natural course versus, like, this, this course right here is very specific. There's, like, three jumps, and it's, like, a very well laid out, you know, mogul thing. Um, and, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like I said, those people can just get in your way. <laughs> um, uh, but there's, like, a very specific, um... Uh, so of courses, I think I want to go down Wolf Hill. I had planned out where I wanted to go, but I can't remember. A lot of these courses have like different styles, so I think Wolf Hill is a a lot more just kind of a chill chill course. Um, you know, while you're doing these, like I already have an S, so I wouldn't really be doing it. But if I was like trying to uh, capitalize on it, I'd be doing a lot of turns and stuff. Um, there's a lot of like really silly stuff like this where this that? guy will uh, take a picture of you, so you can just like. You don't actually ski for this guy, but you can just basically, um, he'll take a picture on, on specific courses. So you can be like, okay. And there's just like a set spot on the course where there's a picture they'll take and you can save it to your album if you want. <laughs> um, uh, there's another guy who takes your pictures that's a bit more involving. So it's not just like, hey, congratulations on being here. And then like posing you automatically. You, you It is like set areas he takes pictures of you. And then once you finish this stuff, they basically dump you out. Uh, back at the, the top of the hill in case you wanted to only go down there for that thing or revisit some of these missions up here. Uh, this kid asks you questions. Um, <laughs> some of them are a little uh, uh, difficult. Um, I have like I have no idea what the answer to this is, so I just guess. And hey, I got it. Congratulations. Um, but there's no real penalty to not getting it. He'll just pop up somewhere else, or I think maybe even in the same spot with a different question. Um, you get to learn some interesting things sometimes because of it. Sometimes they're more in-game related stuff, where it's like, hey, uh, the, the guy on the first slope who gives you information about the slope, what's his dream? And it's like, to have a summer house in Dubai is his dream, but like, if you talk to him at the beginning of the game and he's asking you this after like, you know, 10 hours of playing this game or something, um, you know, it's, it's maybe not fresh in your memory, <laughs> so there's really no penalty to it, um, if you mess it up. Uh, this game's pretty lax overall, there's very little, uh, consequence to anything. Um, not a lot of load times to, like, you know, discourage you. Uh, <laughs> these, uh, these other skiers, though, uh, are real, real handfuls, though. There's sometimes where, oh, oh, there's sometimes where, um, you'll be on, like, very narrow courses, and, uh, they are just like, hello, we're going to sit here and like ski left and right and right in front of you. And it kind of just ruins your run, which I think, you know, could be frustrating to some people. Um, I think it's just kind of silly to some extent. Again, it's just like supposed to be kind of a, uh, a ski vacation thing. Um, so I've never been on a ski vacation, but I feel like, you know, if you're skiing with a bunch of other people that that is has the potential of happening um so so i think i think the nighttime in general just has like a lot of nice aesthetics you know we have all the colored lighting down here um all these trees have like you know uh shining you know decorations on them and stuff uh there's a lot of like little attentions to details that aren't like you know particularly like amazing or anything but like you know you can kind of, kind of come up and look at this building it's like a church thing or something uh, you can't really do anything there. Um, you know, those trees don't maybe look amazing, but like, you know, um, there's like a lot of silly things. There's sometimes be like little areas like this where like, it maybe looks like you could like kind of wedge yourself in there, but there's an invisible wall that's kind of in the way to keep you from going back there. I think maybe that would have been nice if they were a bit less, um, um, you know, strict on the, the invisible walls. Um... But, you know, it's, it's mostly fine. There's, there's some, some exploration stuff in this game. And 
and it, it, it does encourage you trying to like you know keep an eye out for places where where you'll um you know like side paths and stuff where you can find some some you know secret objectives for a quest or, or not quest but like a yeah i guess a quest like there'll be like some characters who are hidden in some interesting places that you have to go find them or um there's actually like a a completely hidden course you can find on this on this game um this guy down here basically lets you uh replay some of the old missions you've already been uh i really haven't felt a need to come and do this at this point but uh i thought i'd show you one of the delivery missions um, the only real downside to doing the replay version is like there's some cases like this delivery mission where they kind of give you some instructions on what to do, but you don't get any of that text. Um, really, the ultimate goal is just to go deliver this. But um, what's kind of interesting about these delivery missions in general, honestly, is that, um, you know, that that person is on a part of a course that if I just ski down the hill right now, I actually can't get to within the, the two and a half minute time limit we have here. Um, so basically, you know, I'm trying to deliver this coffee. I can't fall. Um, and and I just need to get it there before a specific period of time. Um, so so the NPC for these always like tells you a recommended path, but really you could go wherever you want to get here. Um, I just happen to remember this recommended path because I did this mission last night. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the recommended way. But yeah, so basically, you know, on this one you have to go up the ski lift to, to get up to where you need to be. So it's not just, you know, going straight down the hill as fast as you can. Uh, but while you're on the ski lift, the timer's still ticking, so you need to go ahead and skip it. Um, and then, you know, there's all these branching paths and stuff, so you just gotta kind of remember what they tell you where you need to go. And, you know, the more points that you get in there, the little more complicated it gets. So, you know, you just gotta remember, okay, I need to go to, you know, stop eight, and then I need to go down Camel Hump. And then I think it's Dolphin Park is the last part, or, or yeah, I think it's Dolphin Park. Um, and so you just kind of like come down here and, and try, oh, you know, I don't want to go over there because that's where all the moguls are and I'll fall and lose my coffee. So there's a little side path here. You can just like, you know, rock it down, which is better. Um, so you can go down there. Again, just people there that just are kind of in your way. Again, they're random though. Sometimes you'll come off a jump and you just land right into somebody and you're like, why are you there? <laughs> why are you here? What? what? That's dangerous. <laughs> why are you sitting at the bottom of this jump? They even tell you at one point in the game that it's like, hey, don't sit at the bottom of the jump. That's a mean thing to do. Um, I have found, okay, that, that wasn't enough to knock me over. I have found that when you go off large jumps, um, if you don't do tricks off of them, um, you don't seem to be able to land. I don't know if that's the case all the time, um, but, you know, I just basically just try to do tricks to make sure, you know that I land because I, I haven't seen any situation where if I have pulled off tricks and successfully landed it I've fallen over but I have had situations where I just launched myself off a jump and oh my gosh oh my gosh dude <laughs> I have seen situations where if I just launch myself off a jump and go really high um, I won't actually make it I'm just gonna roll over here just to nope. uh oh uh oh yeah. 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 <laughs> okay we're, we're getting up there all right so I still have to stop by him. I can't just like, like drive by, hit him with the, the coffee. I have to make sure I stop right on him. There we go. So we delivered that coffee. Um, but yeah, I have had situations where um, I've gone off things that aren't jumps and you can only do tricks off things that are clearly marked as ramps. Um, and uh, in those cases, um, like, I don't really know what to do. You just you just more or less have to just, like, commit to your fate of, I guess I'm going to fall over. So I guess the real goal is to just, like, not, you know, <laughs> not hit ramps that aren't actually ramps. Uh, which is a little limiting. Again, I, I kind of wish you could just go ahead and do tricks off whatever jump you can. And, and you know, it would make sense. But maybe they're trying to avoid any abuse of the trick system or something. But I don't know. I, I don't really, um... doesn't really, uh... Uh, bother me too much but it would have been nice if you could have uh, gone some of these areas like this you know there's not a lot of slope here so you just got to kind of keep keep uh, flicking the Wii remote and nunchuck as you go through which you know depending on how you are with motion controls I'll say this game is a heavy heavy makes a heavy use of motion controls so you know you got to make sure if you're um oh dude um, you got to make sure if uh if you're going to play this game, you got to be okay with those controls. Um, there, as far as I can tell, there's no just button only thing. There is balance board support in this game, but unfortunately I do not have a balance board with me. 
Um, so I will hopefully have one in the near future. Uh, there's a sequel to this game. I think it's called Wii Ski Plus Snowboard. And then apparently Go Vacation on the Nintendo Switch. And uh, I think it was a Wii game originally, but on the Switch as well. It came to the Switch a year or two ago. Um, that That is apparently also within this franchise, I believe. Um, just kind of a you know, laid back, just kind of do some stuff kind of game. Uh, I think that has a lot more variety in like the mini games and stuff. Um, but you know, is it as relaxed as this? I don't really know. Also like Fishing Resort on the Wii, which is a Yuji Naka game. I haven't played that yet. Uh, that's something that I kind of want to check out eventually. But it's just like, this is just a super relaxing game. You know, you just kind of come here. You're not aiming to be like the best skier. You're not like, you know, there's a race mode in this game, but it's it's kind of whatever. It's, it's just basically the race mode from this game where you basically go down certain hills. Uh, you can do multiplayer in this game, even in the free mode. I don't really know how that works. Um, I don't know if it's just one person skiing around and then a split screen for the events or if you're like, you know, able to kind of all go around the mountain at the same time. I feel like that would be kind of a technical nightmare on the Wii with uh, this mountain all being loaded at once. But, you know, I don't know. Um, but I uh, unfortunately do not have uh, anyone around to easily. Oops. Ah. You got to shake the remote to make sure you don't fall over, basically. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case. Um, but you know, it's 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 kind of it's pretty chill. Um, little snowman on the left there. <laughs> yeah, you just come out here and do what you want, and and that's kind of this game. Let me see if I can get one of the other um, the uh, other uh, weather situations, or or at least we can see like the fireworks or something. The number of shoot locations has increased. So, hop back in as Charla, nighttime again. I try to do daylight as much as possible as well. Not as much as possible, but I try to do like 50-50 daylight and, and nighttime in case, you know, there's any kind of difference. But, um, uh, it's not always. I'm going to go a little, little further down. So, hopefully get some more variety here rather than just doing that first hill again. Or that top hill. Um, but, uh... I haven't really seen any any variation in daylight, so we got another clear sky ones, but this one has a uh, fireworks instead of the aurora stuff. So, so I think the sound design in this game is actually pretty cool. Something I haven't really talked about so far, but like you know, all the music in this game is basically, as far as I can tell, Namco music from other games, or at least a chunk of it is. Uh, you'll hear plenty of like Katamari, oh well, not plenty, but there there's Katamari Damase music in here. Um, there's also like um, uh, Ridge Racer music, uh, Pac-Man music, and it's all like, you know, distorted, like it's playing over an intercom speaker. And as you get further and closer to buildings and speakers, you can hear it, you know, more clearly, more loudly and stuff like that. So, so it's not, you know, it's got a lot of like intention to its sound design that I like a lot. And then like just the, the like quiet rumble of the fireworks in the background is like kind of nice. Although those fireworks just despawned for some reason. <laughs> um, and it's just like a nice aesthetic. Like you just get to see like all the uh, the lights and stuff of the city as you go down. Um, just looks very, very nice, I guess. You know, as simple as this game is and you know, as pudgy as the characters look. And, um, you know, <clears throat> and you know how simple all these characters are you can bring your me's in but i think this game has a, a unique and aesthetic on its own that bringing your me in is a little uh you know it's, it's something you could do if you want to but but i think i'd rather just like stick with the characters they actually have in the game for this one um and i think the me's do look fairly good though i think a lot of problems with a lot of me's is that sometimes when they are implemented into a game they actually look kind of off model in this case i think they look pretty good um so so yeah, and then you can just kind of like, you know, if you want to really just chill, you can just go on your thing and just, you know, go up the hill, look at the little, little, I think there's like a lion or something over here, or is that on the other side? Let's go see the lions. It's not really a lion, it's like this weird little dog thing. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I'll show you as we get down there. But uh, yeah, there's like an elephant there too, so... <laughs> It's just, uh, it's just a lot of little, little cute stuff, like that weird Yeti thing, Snow Yeti there. There's just a lot of small attention to details and stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's kind of wee ski. Thanks for coming. Wokechillerboard.com is the website. Um, in terms of what's up there right now, I'm trying to think if there's anything related, like, on Wii stuff to really 
really say. There's a couple of quick plays for like we play and stuff like that, which is I guess kind of related to this. Um, but yeah, I do a variety of stuff. I, the Wii is like one of my favorite consoles, so if you go to onecontrollport.com, look up some Wii games, uh, you'll find plenty of Wii-related content there, uh, of all types of games, JRPGs and you know action games, more than traditional Nintendo stuff. But uh, but yeah, thanks for coming. Hope you have a great week. Bye.